Hi, welcome to Baking with J Plus Dan. I'm Jay. I'm Dan. And today we're going to make key lime tea cake. This is a delicious recipe, a light loaf cake. And if you don't have access to key limes, use conventional limes. It comes out just as well. So our first ingredient is one stick of unsalted butter. Make sure it's at room temperature. When that goes in, we get to put in one and a half cups of white sugar. So we'll blend that together all at once. Okay, so our butter and sugar are nice and fluffy and light. Just give a quick scrape down. Our next ingredient is four egg yolks. Yeah, so we went ahead and separated our egg yolks from our egg whites. I like to do it when the egg yolks are cold so that it's easier to separate from the egg whites. So go ahead and do that and reserve the four egg whites for later in our recipe. So the egg yolks go in at this stage. The egg yolks are fully incorporated into the batter. I'm gonna give it one more scrape down. And the remaining wet ingredients go in at this point. You have one cup of sour cream alongside two teaspoons of a key lime juice and a half teaspoon of key lime extract. If you don't have the key lime extract, you could add extra juice. You could even use a lemon extract would work. Yep. That goes in. We have the zest of two limes, one teaspoon of lime zest. And lastly, Perfect. a half teaspoon of vanilla. Oh my God, it smells so good already. <sighs> so we're gonna mix this up so that it's fully incorporated. All right, so our batter is fully incorporated. You can see that nice consistency. And Dan is gonna tell us what to do next. So for this recipe, we add our dry ingredients by hand because we wanna maintain that lightness of the batter. The, uh, the, we're using cake flour. It's one and three quarters cup of cake flour sifted, one half teaspoon of baking powder, and one quarter teaspoon of baking soda. So I'm gonna stir this in by hand as Jason explains to us how to whip the egg whites. All right, so in this bowl, we have four egg whites. Make sure again, they're at room temperature. That's gonna help with the volume. Also make sure that the bowl that you're mixing it in does not have any oil, butter, or fat because that will uh, hinder the, the egg whites mixing. So I like to use a handy um, hand mixer. Start it out at maybe low at the beginning, then you can move to medium and high. We want this to be a soft peak. You don't want it to be too hard or dry. Otherwise the cake, once you put it in, it will not hold up. So here we go. Okay, so our egg whites have been beaten to soft peak. See how that looks? There we go. They're not too stiff. Still has a little jiggle to it. All right, so that's done. And it's time to now incorporate the egg whites into the batter. So here's how your batter looks completely. All the flour's been completely incorporated. And I like to do it just a scoop at a time just so that you don't deflate all those fluffy egg whites that you just spent five minutes <laughs> whipping up. So just start one scoop at a time. We wanna fold that in so you cut through the batter and just turn it on itself. You can also then start to rotate the bowl. Yeah, you see those lovely airy streaks. What do you think? A little bit more? Yeah, just a little bit more. It's okay if you see a couple of the egg white streaks in it. So we've prepared the nine by five by three inch loaf pan. I've buttered it, floured the sides, and put a piece of parchment paper in the bottom so we don't have to struggle getting it out later. Yes, so you can see that batter is incorporated with the egg whites. You can still see there's a couple of streaks of egg whites, that's fine. You don't want to totally deflate any of the egg whites. You want it to keep it nice and light. 
and we're going to start filling the pan. So he'll fill the pan about three quarters full. You've got to leave some space for the egg whites to rise. So the loaf pan goes into the oven preheated at 325 degrees. It takes about 50 to 55 minutes to bake. Each oven is different, so use your cake tester and make sure it comes out clean. When the cake comes out of the oven, let it cool for 15 minutes in the pan, then turn it onto a rack until it cools completely. Yeah, so that'll give you plenty of time to make a yummy key lime glaze. You're going to start with one cup of sifted um, confectioner sugar, and to that, you're going to add two to three tablespoons of key lime juice. Uh, as well as two to three tablespoons of milk or heavy cream, whichever you have in hand. And the zest of one key lime or regular lime. Mmm, it's so fragrant. It smells delicious. All right, so now we're going to start to mix that up into our glaze. My glaze is still a little thick, so I'm going to add a little bit more of the key lime juice, as well as another couple of tablespoons of the half and half, or heavy cream or milk. Well, let's see that. Yeah, see, so you can see that consistency. Mm. Let's take a little, let me have a little taste of that. Mmm, it's delicious. The lime is very forward. That's excellent. If you want more zest, you add more zest. If you want more of the juice, that's got a nice, nice full flavor. Yeah, so you just slowly pour the glaze on your cooled cake. Then you can just use the back of a spoon to just smooth it out a little bit. So you can let that drip into the pan there or transfer it good and transfer it to your serving tray. Bring that to here for a, here it is, for a really simple garnish, just slice slice some limes, nice thin slice, cut, cut about halfway through, and you make a twist and just place it down the center of the cake. I think three, looks like three is gonna make it. Yeah. Isn't that good? This way. <laughs> and there is a yummy key lime tea cake. All right, let's give it a taste. Oh, it cuts really beautifully with a serrated knife. It's got that crumbly texture. Thank you. Mm. Mm. It's so light, refreshing, perfect summer dessert. Mm. Absolutely delicious. So this has been Baking with J Plus Dan. Remember to like, subscribe, and share. And also remember to ring that bell. Mm.